You know, I've said this, that I think Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, the rivalry is great. I don't need Caitlin Clark to win everything. It's a magic bird thing, back and forth. If, if Angel Reese wins Rookie of the Year, good for her. Some of y'all gonna be triggered by some of the things I'm gonna say in this video, man. And I had to come out and do this because honestly, I'm listening to what people are saying in the mainstream media. I'm listening to what people are saying on YouTube and on podcasts. And honestly, many of you folks have it all twisted. We are gonna talk about Caitlin Clark right now. <laughs> We believe every NBA fan that plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. My name is Robin Marks. I used to work with NBC Sports Roto World and Hashtag Basketball as a dynasty ranker, and I cover fantasy basketball for the most part. We've done some WNBA this season, but man, it's getting crazy out in these streets. I've been on the record saying that the rivalry between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese can catapult this league into another stratosphere, right? But the WNBA keeps dropping the ball. Like, I don't give a shit, Sue Puppy. You do whatever it is you gotta do to get this young lady highlighted on any and every platform possible, including the Olympics, including all-Star Weekend, including the Dagon Bar Mitzvah, the Cousins Cookout, the Family Reunion. You do whatever you got to do to get her some shine, but they're not doing it. And Colin Cowherd talked about it. I wanted to share a little bit of his take on it. Let's check it out. You know, I've said this, that I think Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, the rivalry is great. I don't need Caitlin Clark to win everything. It's a magic bird thing, back and forth. If, if Angel Reese wins Rookie of the Year, good for her. I like the back and forth. But I just want to tell you that Caitlin Clark last night had 19 assists in a game to set a league record. She's a rookie on a bad team. And this is not like a rookie record, right? This is the WNBA league record in the history of this league, which I think is like 27, 28 years, this is the most that anyone has compiled in terms of assists in one game. And people are still hating on her. It's crazy. She has scored or assisted on 66 points, 71% of the Fever's points. That's the most ever in league history. She's breaking records every week. So part of the silliness of not allowing her on the Olympic team is she was a very quickly improving player, and now you kind of look silly. She's arguably huh? the best playmaker in the league, arguably Facts. the second best three-point shooter in the league. Let's go. I don't know. They seem valuable Olympic competition, and she's not on the team. But yesterday they also announced the skills competition for the WNBA All-Star team, and she didn't make that either. What? She didn't make the three-point shooting contest? So you argued she wasn't good for the Olympics. Your argument, though I don't buy it, but it was your argument, women's basketball, that she would be a distraction. Stupid. I roll, but okay. So isn't the perfect place to put her in the skills games. competition where she's one of the best three-point shooters? Facts. And she's a highly skilled player. So now what is it? Pettiness, gatekeeping, insular, dumb. Ooh. If you're not going to put her in the Olympics, oh, you're 0 for 1. Now you're not putting her in the skills competition. She quadrupled the ratings. Nobody's going to watch that skills competition. They would Nobody. Highlighting Clark and other players. Thank God the, the, the WNBA didn't go 0 for 3. They did find it in their heart to put her on the WNBA all-star team but she'll probably be at the end of the bench and struggle to get minutes, I would imagine. But, I mean, it, it's, it's almost hard rooting for women's basketball. You're, 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 you're like, <laughs> it, cra it cracks me up how they treat her. So let me jump in really quick. First thing I want to say is that, and again, I'm not trying to be harsh here. I have nothing but the utmost respect for all athletes, especially women's athletes, right? But I will say, that folks in the general public, right, like 
if you weren't a diehard WNBA fan, chances are you weren't checking for the league. Like when the league first started, I'm an, I admit I was watching like Cheryl Swoop, Cynthia Cooper, uh, Rebecca Lobo. Like I was watching it, but I'm a basketball head. Even as a basketball fan, over the years I've slowly disconnected from being an engaged fan with the WNBA, you know, product. And this young lady, Caitlin Clark as well as Angel Reese, right? I'll also give Angel Reese her flowers. But like to downplay the Caitlin Clark effect is insane. If the WNBA doesn't get this right, they're gonna screw this up. They just inked a brand new deal, a new TV deal. I think it's in the billions. They're like making all of these huge strides as an organization, but the thing that is helping them get to that level and some, not even some, anyone with common sense can see that the reason it's happening is because of Caitlin Clark. That asset, that piece of the puzzle is not getting highlighted enough. They need to lean into it more than they are or they're gonna screw this up. Let me know in the comments, do you think Caitlin Clark will be the rookie of the year?